Good evening. Welcome again to another midweek prayer meeting. And we're just so glad to have you. A Wednesday evening, that time of the week where we refresh ourselves and we uh, get a, another spiritual meal to keep us going. And it is our hope that the God of heaven will bless you tremendously. And just in case you have not yet done so, invite a friend, invite a neighbor, invite a brother, and join us as we worship together this evening. We wanted to understand that God has something tremendous in store for you this evening. And I want to encourage you to receive it in full. However, just before we go into God's holy word, we're going to take a very special song. And then thereafter, we'll continue with God's word at this time. Uh. Eternal Father, we're so grateful for this privilege to be your servants. We're so happy, God, that we can call you Daddy. And Father, we have come on this final prayer evening time for the month of May just to say thanks 
We thank you, God, for the way you have blessed our children. We thank you, God, for the ways you provided throughout this month. And even at this time now, Father, we pray that as we, we open your holy word, that you will teach us, that you will guide us, that you will bless us, that you will strengthen us. And we ask, O oh righteous Father, that somebody who is worshiping even now will come to have a deeper walk with you and to understand how much you love them is our prayer and our asking in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let God's people say, Amen. It says here that there are some instructions that may appear unacceptable. And so when you look at the passage quite well, the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 5, uh, verse 8, So it was when Elisha the man of God heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes and that he sent to the king saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. The Bible said that when Naaman came to, to Elisha, now like any person who uh, was used to enjoying a certain kind of privilege, a certain kind of, of lifestyle, he expected something fancy, maybe a fanfare. Uh, and, and sometimes too, your, your concept of what God is about to do can be thwarted by your culture by your experiences, by what you're used to. When you come to God, the Bible says that uh, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So here it was now. Uh, this mighty captain came to uh, the humble man of God. This mighty captain came with his pomp and his, his pageantry. The Bible said that uh, he expected perhaps Elisha uh, to come out and uh, do some wonderful thing. In fact, let's read it from the word and hear what the Bible says. In verse uh, 9, Naaman went with his horses and chariots. Maybe he came with his uh, Lexus or his, uh, his uh, what do you call, his Pajero. Maybe he drove up in his limousine attended by his bodyguard. Maybe he flew in on a private jet uh, and he was escorted with red carpet uh, to the prophet's door. I'm not sure how he came, but it suggests that however he came, he came in a mighty way. And so it says here that in verse 10, and, and Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash yourself, yes, in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. You look at verse 11, you look at verse 12, uh, and the Bible says here that Naaman was upset, he was offended, because he could not accept the instruction that was given to him. Why should he wash in the river Jordan? Why should he wash uh, in a river that at that time of the year, uh, it was a little low, and so the waters appeared dirty. Uh, why would he wash uh, in a river that when he compared the rivers that were back in the country that he's from, they uh, were totally better in his eyes than the river Jordan. But what he didn't realize, that God did not say that he should go back to, to Syria to wash. He got a specific instruction with specific responsibilities, with specific things that he was to do. The Bible said uh, that when you walk through uh, Bible history, you realize that the River Jordan is quite significant to God's people. It was the River Jordan that opened its door as God's people marched triumphantly uh, into the promised land. So the River Jordan is a promise that God wanted to do something remarkable in the experience of Naaman. And so he struggled uh, to let go of his pride. He, he struggled uh, to let go of his, uh, his garments that were so wrapped in, uh, in beauty. He struggled to accept what God had said. And maybe you are at that stage too. Maybe you are at that stage where, where God is saying to you, 
It is time to let go of that relationship. It is time to leave uh, that situation that has caused you to lose your way. It is time to change the kind of lifestyle that you are living. Because unless you do so, it will destroy your health, it will destroy your wealth, and it will destroy your life and perhaps also the lives of your family. So all of these things were at stake when Naaman turned to go back to Syria. He was going to go back in his leprosy. And perhaps he was going to go back uh, to a life that would have condemned him to death. But praise God, there are some people that are always there. And like this little girl, there was a servant who said, Master, if perhaps the man would have given you some mighty things to do. Many persons find it easy to do the things that are wonderful, the things that are pleasant, yes, uh, to sing and to, to preach and to teach and to hold positions in the church. But if God calls you, pastor, uh, from keeping uh, something that is wrong to accept the truth, uh, and you say, well, if I leave here and I come there, uh, would I still be called a pastor? Uh, the point is not what you will be called. The point is, will you obey God's holy word? There are some persons who are not willing to even be a deacon in God's house. But I'm so glad for what David said. David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. So the Bible says here that it was tough for him to accept what the man of God said. But he realized that in accepting what God's instruction was, he came to realize that what was impossible in Syria, what was impossible with the early physician was possible with the God who was with the man in Samaria. And so the Bible said that he went down, praise the Lord, he went down uh, to the river and as was instructed, the Bible said in verse 14, so he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. Yes, he did. According to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Oh, Jesus said it like this, unless you are converted and become like a little child, you will not be saved. This little girl's fate was evident right here. Until Naaman reached a place where he was totally and completely dependent on God, he could not experience the joy of finding his healing. And today, friends, I want you to understand that God may be saying that it's time for you to to seek him, to serve him. Yes, you, little one, you are not as old as your brother was when he gave his heart to God, but perhaps God is saying to you today, now is that acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Yes, my brother, you are saying, yeah, uh, it is COVID time. I can't get baptized in COVID time, but I want to understand that God is saying to you that today, if you will hear his voice, don't harden your heart. And so, friends, as we prepare to, to close our prayerful time together, I want to believe that during this time, while the man, Naaman, went to Israel, uh, the little girl, perhaps she was at home doing her chores, doing her little duties. Uh, maybe she was saying to herself, I just feel like something good is about to happen. Maybe she was there and she was saying, God is so good. God is so good. Maybe she was there and she was saying uh, the song, uh, count uh, uh, the days, uh, the weeks as days, and, and, and count the days as it were, uh, as hours in my own language, because 
any moment now, uh, the master will come back home uh, and he will be happy. I want you to understand that when you have prayed, uh, when you have confidence in the God you serve, uh, it's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. Uh, when you say, God, I need your power, I need your help, uh, it's not a matter of if, but God says that he will intervene. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that uh, in him, uh, every promise is a yes and not a no. And so you can hold God at his word. And so I can only imagine in my sanctified imagination, says one preacher, I can only imagine what it was like uh, when Naaman reached back home. And uh, if he is like any normal husband who has been away from his wife for a very, very long time, uh, I can only imagine that it was a happy union. It was a, a happy moment. If he is like any daddy uh, who, when he is away from his children for a while and they would run and they would hug him and say, Daddy, because they were unable to hug him for a while, I want you to understand um, that there are some experiences that are just remarkable. And as good as it were, the first time when the family started out, um, know that they are united again. No more leprosy on his skin. No more disease that could affect his family. He was now happy again and whole. He could be with his family again. I believe that it was a happy time. I believe it was a glad time. I believe it was a time of celebration. And I hear uh, the hopper singing. It's shouting time in heaven. Yes, I believe it was shouting time. In the home of Naaman, because the family was now experiencing the remarkable experience of being reunited in full with their husband, with their daddy, and with their master. And tonight, friends, as wonderful as this story has been, there's something greater that you must understand from the story. When we walk together back into the book of Luke, we realize that this story was not so much about that little girl. And yes, my young child, May is important, but uh, May about child mo child's month is not so much about what can be done for a child or what you should do for your children. It's not even so much what the children themselves can do. It's really about how much do I really know my God? And is there something else that God wanted me to do for him in the month of May, even as a little child? The Bible says here, friends, that this story was not so much about Naaman either. The story pointed to the work that the prophet of God was about to do. But this story was not so much about the prophet either. This story is about the God that the prophet served, yes? The God who was the healer, the God who was the omnipotent one. And when you, you look at the word of God, you realize that the God that this little girl served, the God that Elisha served, uh, is a God who the Bible says that uh, he became like you and like me and dwelt among us. So we find this God right here in Luke chapter 4. And the Bible says uh, in verse 16, So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. The Bible says here, And when he was handed a book, uh, the Bible says of the prophet Isaiah, And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. In verse 18 he says, and this is where it comes home to you now, my brother. It says here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I want you to understand that 
that COVID-19 may have come uh, and there are some persons who may be unable to go out to the house of God to worship but praise God worship still continues uh, because even in your bedroom even in your living room even in your kitchen uh, the word of God is being preached uh, you may even be on uh, your doorstep on the outside you are still hearing God's word uh, God's word is going places. God's word is touching hearts everywhere. And men, women, boys, and girls, they're coming to understand the amazing power of God's holy word. The Bible says here, he has sent me to heal the broken heart. And maybe you are not a lady of leprosy, but maybe you are a man, a woman, who has a broken heart. You have been left abandoned. You have been left uh, with children with no father. You have been left uh, and your bank account uh, is empty. Your heart is heavy and all is in your mind is vengeance. I want you to understand that Jesus says uh, that I am the one who is available to heal your broken heart. The Bible says, friends, to proclaim liberty to the captives. You may not be under what you call uh, COVID restrictions where you are. You may not be facing uh, the whole issue of being behind bars, but perhaps you are barred in, you are barbed in, you are locked away behind the bars of your addiction. You just can't stop. Uh, drinking from that bottle. You just can't let go of that drug that you have come to love so much. You just can't let go of that gambling habit. You just can't give up, it seems, uh, that sexual promiscuity. But I want you to understand the Bible says here, friends, right here, and yes, little child, you may have your daddy and your daddy may seem to be a drunkard. You can get on your knees and call on your God. You may have a mommy and every night she seemed to have gone out and praise God for COVID. Uh, she has not gone out in a long time, but she is just itching to go. Get down on your knees and the God who is able to see you on your knees will answer you in the day of reckoning. The Bible says, friends, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. There are some people who have been affected by COVID-19. Your breathing is still not the same. And to top it off, you struggle with high blood pressure. You have arthritic pain. You have all kind of hereditary challenges and you are now being rocked with this dreaded disease. You are feeling way down, but there is still hope in the Lord God of heaven. Maybe you are oppressed by that feeling of being under demonic attacks. And yes, you may have toyed and you may have experimented, but you never planned to be in so deep. I want you to understand that God says that he's still available to bring healing and hope. It may appear to you to be impossible, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. So friends, the Bible says here that God said that I will open the eyes of the blind and I will proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I am so glad that this evening, God has led you to join us in worship. It's no coincidence. Perhaps you didn't plan to go by your friend's house. Maybe you didn't know that you would be stuck in a foreign country. But you are where you are, but right where you are, there is a God who has come and he has promised you salvation full and free. You see, friends, the truth is, the day came when Naaman perhaps would have laid on a bed somewhere, 
the day came when Naaman would have closed his eyes one last time and it was covered over with a sheet. Uh, he may have been buried in some grave somewhere. The day came when this little girl, I don't know if she got a chance to go back home to Israel. The day came when this little girl would have closed her eyes in death. But I am so happy, friends, that based on the word of God, the day will come when the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise. The day will come when the Bible says that this mortality that is no hold in, in jail, my internal immortality, one day the Bible says that we shall be changed. And I can only imagine what a day it will be. I hear someone say, when my Jesus we will see, when we look upon his face, hallelujah, the one who will save us by his grace. What a day of rejoicing it will be when a brother Naaman will be changed from mortal to immortality. When that little unnamed girl will be changed from corruption into incorruption. When together we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and praise God. Thus shall we always be this evening, friends, I want you to understand that it's not so much about whether or not COVID will come and go, whether or not in the government seeking to reopen in the economy, that we will have new outbreaks or not. The real issue is not so much about all these things. The truth is more bad things will happen. The sad reality is that many things will come in the days beyond tomorrow that will cause you pain and heartache. But I want you to understand today that there is a God who is in your home. Yes, right there. A God who is available right now, who is able to give you salvation full and free. A God who is able to give you the peace which surpasses all understanding. What a blessing it is when we can train our children so that when they get older, they will not depart. Look at it, it's so interesting with this little girl that she could have you know, said to Naaman's wife that there is help. And I want us to know, when we train them, they will do exploit for Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we chat in heaven. We want to thank you for our children. We know that they are special and they are precious. I pray that you will help us to do all that we can so that they can give their little hearts to you. We know that many times when they are not with us, that sometimes we wonder if they are making wise choices, but help us to do our part and leave the rest to you. We want to pray for those who are watching, those who are going through their struggles, we have so many of us as our backs are against the wall. We don't know what to do, but we know that you are able, you are capable to do anything for us. At times we have our sickness, our illness, and we don't know where to turn. But thank you, Lord, that you are the greatest physician. You are the sympathizing Jesus. At times we have our struggles to pay our bills, but thank you that you are always there to provide for us. So help us to hold on to you. Help us to trust you. And I pray that as we continue to trust you, others will see what we are doing and come and glorify you before it's too late. Comforts hard. And even those who might be depressed, I pray that you will bring healing to them. Thank you for being our father and our friend. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.